not very polite. Uh, so, uh, so basically, so basically, maybe you can introduce yourself, okay? And I'm going to try to to answer the question that you have about in SEAD at the time they arrive, okay? So basically, for you, Philippe, I know you. So you, Philippe, uh, I forgot you're from Poland. I forgot the the company you work for. You work for which company? At Sorry. Upform. It's a company from Denmark. Yeah. We yeah we are end-to-end um, -end, um, supplier of of uh, advertising space in internet. Okay, so you work in uh, media and IT. Huh? Okay, media yes. and IT. Media and IT. And by the way, you're in class with me. So we're the class by the way this morning. So you're preparing the gym app, and you probably uh, get in the seven hundred. And most likely you get in Seattle. Okay, uh, Simar, uh, who are you? Uh, what is your background, Simar? Hello. Hey. Uh, yeah, I'm from India. Uh, okay. I'm currently working at a startup, uh, which is a food delivery startup, Zomato. Okay. Uh, I've been working since two years. Before that, I had my own venture, which for some reason I had to uh, let go of. And uh, yeah, so I have given the GMAT already. I have a 720 in GMAT and uh, NCAD is one of my target schools. Okay. So, Aman, I will ask you to, to do the follow up of this uh, seminar. Huh? Aman? Hello? Aman? Where is Aman? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. I will I'm ask you to do the follow up of all the people who have attended the seminar. Thanks, okay? sure, Senya. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, we do the follow up. Okay. Uh, so basically, you're from India, you have a GMAT of 720, which is good. That may not be enough for an Indian, huh? unfortunately. Uh, if you were a Spaniard, there would be no problem. Uh, and INSEAD is one of your target schools, yeah? Ah, Karim, Karim finally Karim. Uh, arrived, okay? Finally. Finally, he arrived. So thank you very much, Karim. You're welcome. And then there is, there is Sima, and then there is Prabhav, okay? Prabhav. So where are you from? So you're from India, imagine. Prabhav, it's an Indian first name. Uh, can you tell us more about yourself, uh, Prabhav? Hello? Yep. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm from India. You're absolutely right. Um, so um, I'm currently a second year student in my undergrad. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not working anywhere currently. And uh, I'm not applying to an MBA. I'm applying for an early master's. Uh, like, for my okay. Yeah. Can, can you put your camera on? Is it possible to put the camera on? I didn't you? get you. What? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Karim. Okay. Alors, basically, uh, today I'm very happy to introduce you to Karim. Huh? So Karim was my student about one year ago. Huh, Karim, Rocky, something like that. And I explained in the post uh, that uh, it was a funny story because he was preparing uh, BCG or McKinsey. What, which one was it? With uh, Alexandra McDay. And during the they talked together because they were like for an interview session. And they say, uh, so Alexandra told him uh, I got accepted to INSEAD. So he was for the for the MIM, uh, and, uh, and she told him, yes, yes. And she said, by the way, I know a guy who can help you was 100% uh, success at INSEAD, which is not true with Indian students, huh? uh, to tell you the truth. You should meet him, OK? Now, Karim, so uh, when are you going to start to, but thanks to, to meet you. Huh? We, we, we send SMS once in a while, but uh, I've not talked to you for some time. So basically, so wh what do you do now? Are you still at work? Or what is your situation today? Uh, can I cannot hear you. Can you can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, yeah. uh, I have like a twenty-four hour flight, so I'm a little bit uh, disconcerted. Uh, where, where, where do you come from? Where do you come from? No. Where Me. I, from? I I was in uh, Singapore. Okay, Singapore. And to go from Singapore to to Egypt, it takes uh, it takes twenty-four hours. Okay. No, yes, no. Um, but I had a transit in the middle, and it was uh, it was a big uh, big route. Until okay. you are, I was able to arrive to Egypt this uh, this morning, but I'm happy that I made it. So where I was to respond to your question, uh, currently I'm, I'm I'm still working in the tech industry with the, with the startup company I'm with, and at the same time I'm applying for um, consulting firms as part of my pre MBA uh, due diligence. So uh, building connections, uh, looking for any pre MBA experiences, uh, fellowships with McKinsey and BCG uh, that could help me uh, achieve my post MBA plans, which to get a job in, in, in consulting and, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, so it's a it's a it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. So you still want to work there? So uh, I forgot. Will you start this September or in January? Uh, no, I, I will be commencing my my MBA on on January uh, twenty twenty okay. third, and uh, okay. it will be like around nine months. And uh, the good thing about this is that I would have the summer time to use it in my um, in internship. an internship okay. opportunity, and this also. Okay increase the probability of, of of acceptance or getting a job after the, the yeah, mba yeah, like, like, so of course it's a it's a good idea yeah. uh, so uh so basically be, before so that's the basically the situation and so yeah you see what he's doing it's very intelligent what he's doing so he's, he's basically he's building the network before starting and by the way we yeah, work a lot with Ben in belgium and i can tell you that it's probably the best way to go into consulting so that they they get to know you and probably by the way uh, it's also possible that they do some, uh, for instance, of these companies offer like pre-MBA programs. So you know, yes. that, for instance, uh, a CIMA, uh, you get accepted to INSEAD, uh, you get the final offer in December. So you know that you will start, uh, you have uh, you have eight months before you start. So you can perfectly start to to to, to contact uh, Ben, BCG, McKinsey, etc., and get uh, what can I say, and and uh, get an offer. To have like a three months or six months mission with them so it gives you time to resign from your current job do a mission and of course if it works well you can get then uh not sponsorship but at least an offer first mba huh? so that's something yes. that you can do it's probably easier to to get there okay because i give you an example i was talking to the lady who managed uh, the the ben um, interviews at uh, INSEAD. she told me that she spent about 20 weeks per year at INSEAD. And she interviews 800 students, 800, okay, out of 1,000. So it means that the one that she does not interview are two who already work in consulting, basically, okay? Exactly. So it means that every single person at INSEAD will ask for an interview with uh, Ben, BCG, and McKinsey. Uh, so well, basically, she received 800 offers. I don't know how many uh, will get an interview, and then, uh, but probably uh, a lot of them. So, so it's very competitive once you're at INSEAD, okay? So the best way, if you want to get in, is to start before. Early. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, it was it was a different um, um, career goals that you had before when we when we applied, huh? because when we applied, you put a different career goals. I remember. No, it was not consulting. What was it? Con consulting was part of the of the of, of the things that I wanted to do, and I also I wanted to go uh, into entrepreneurship as well, yeah, and yeah. maybe like spin my own company, something related to what I what I do in in, in tech as well, but. Again, INSEAD is known for consulting, so I want to capitalize on this. And if through the uh, opportunity I was able to look or find a room for me to spin that early on, right after the MBA, definitely I, I will utilize it. But the number one priority would be consulting, then the entrepreneurship uh, idea I have. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's probably what you do. By the way, one does not go without the other. They don't, they're not mutually... Uh, exclusive huh? so you can start with consulting anyway at the INSEAD we'll have quite some debts huh? okay yes uh, exactly. so, the, so the consulting uh consulting can be a good way uh, you work there for two three years and it pays back for the mba and you have good salary Definitely. then you make a network I imagine that yeah. you have to spend two three years at McKinsey. you know many people uh, and you may then decide uh, because usually what they do uh when you come from a school like INSEAD and you have no experience in um, in consulting you will work one year as a senior associate, okay, uh, uh, which is already like an engagement manager in reality at, uh, for instance, at McKinsey. And then uh, after one year, we will promote you to sort of team leader, okay, so you, you, yes. you will manage uh, others. Uh, so it's already a fast track, huh? okay, we start as fast yeah. as if you started, fast track. So you, the idea, and uh, when you become an engagement manager, you have to specialize in something. Imagine that you specialize, I don't know, in a I don't know, in media, okay? So then you're going to build a, an expertise in media, a network. Then you can decide maybe to launch your own media, or whatever. Huh? Yes, okay, so yes. And uh, the, the also plus thing, um, uh, uh, Dr. Hubert, with the consulting, the, the big consulting firms is that they have their own funds. So as, as an exit opportunity, from these uh, consulting firms, if you have an entrepreneurship idea, they can help you fund uh, the, the idea and help you start it as well. So it's uh, 
it's a, it's a good opportunity. Um, like you said, it, they are not mutually exclusive. They depend on one another, and mm -hmm. it could be like a, a route for me to to be able to fund the idea later on after I build the the, the regular business acumen I want. Usually, what I've noticed, you see, uh, Karim, is that most of the students that I had usually uh, are uh, hired by one of their clients. It's a it's a typical exit. I've seen for like ninety percent, they have been yeah. hired by, by one of their clients. Okay. And I'm sure that they, they negotiate something. Uh, if you're a big, big, uh, big clients, they leave you alone. But basically, one day, a client will say, "Okay, we like what you do. We need you." And then they know it works uh, internally. And then they, they leave the consulting company to work for the clients. And of course, I can understand that at some stage. For instance, I have an example of a student who used to work for uh, McKinsey, and now he's working for a football club. He's working for Olympic Olympic Lyonnais, which you mm -hmm. know OL, what you call OL. Yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, Ari, so he's working for OL, and I'm sure that he said, "Okay, it can be pretty cool." He's a general manager of uh, of the football club in Lyon. Lyon is one of the most beautiful cities in uh, in France, and uh, with a good quality of life, good salary. Of course, it's very prestigious. Imagine when you run the the club of the city, uh, the prestige that you have. So the guys are like exactly. the mini god, and uh, and we go from there. Huh? Okay. Voilà. Yeah. Now, uh, basically, that's uh, that's what I, that's what I want to say. Now, basically, so Karim, you have a specific background because you are yourself a smart man, okay? And uh, you have you, you don't, you're not a typical Egyptian, uh, some somehow to say. Uh, in that, uh, yeah. And you, by the way, you don't, you don't even live in Egypt. So, can you tell us more about your background uh, so that uh, that will be a good introduction for the others? Yeah, of course, of course. So uh, I always begin by by saying that I'm an athlete. So I used to swim for maybe 15 years. I was a member of the national team. I competed nationally, internationally, and in Egypt and 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 uh, in, the, in, the, in the region, I was able to achieve high, high ranks and high awards when it, when it comes to my, my my athletic life. And then later on, I studied computer engineering and math and and and, and business as well in, in the American University in Cairo. And then later on. Uh, I was able to enter the um, oil and gas industry in the Gulf region, and I spent eight years uh, of my career in oil and gas. I was able to do as well master's degree in, uh, from UK and from Harry Watt in, in, in petroleum engineering. And then, like two years ago, I decided that I want to quit oil and gas. I want to quit engineering. Enough of the the front the front line type of jobs, and I want to go into like the decision making, build my own business acumen, have my own like ideas and, and thoughts and really utilize my full potential to be able to really create the impact and and leave the change that I want to leave. I quit. I stayed around maybe eight months at home, starting from scratch, working on my skills, working on my abilities with life coach, with 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 um, with career coaches as well. And then I was able to enter the tech realm uh, with a company called Trella just to avoid the jargon it's uber but for trucks so the same concept trucking portal we connect shippers with transporters and and in a in, in, in a three-year period we were able to expand in four different countries and now the company it's a series a company yc inv invested in it maersk exxon many different companies invested in it like the big venture capitalist and yeah and now I'm planning to commence my MBA in INSEAD in a couple of months, and uh, we'll see how how things will 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 take me after that. Okay, so it's a it's a very important thing. So and basically at the same time, so uh, uh, and according to you, uh, Kevin, why do you think that uh, they have uh, they have hired you? Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Karim, Karim came. Sorry. Uh, Kevin, uh, Ariane, we could not find uh, Karim, so we asked you to come uh, to help, but uh, but uh, Karim came finally, so it's it's okay, Ariane, huh? it's okay, okay, hello, you can stay with us if you want, but Karim came finally, huh? you can mute yourself, okay, so, so can you keep going, yeah, Karim, so Karim, according to, to, to you, why has uh, INSEAD selected you? So I think, and, and from my vantage point, I think the reason why they they selected me because because of my background, uh, my background is very very diverse. 
and uh, part of the, the 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 core the core value or the the core leverage of INSEAD is diversity. So you you enter the the program and and you meet people from from ninety different nationalities, and you you wouldn't uh, get this type of exposure in, in any other MBA program, especially in the top mm -hmm. ten. They exist in Europe. They exist in uh, in the Middle East. They exist in Asia. So I guess diversity is 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 a key determinant factor, definitely, in in why the the, the why they 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 chose me. And I think it could go as well into the soft skills, my character, my personality, the ambition, the goal. They would like to have people uh, with 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 objective people who would add value uh, to the program and add value to their to their to their peers in the class, and at the same time have high potential of success post the, the MBA program. Uh, so th these are the main reason I think uh, why mm -hmm. I was uh, shortlisted. So probably, uh, yes, according to me, but you have a, a good education because you studied at American University in Cairo, uh, Descent GMAT, then you have an international background, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, you, have, you have worked in different fields, oil and gas, uh, startup, you know, uh, different sectors, so basically, yeah. As a consultant, they, they like people who have uh, both education, engineering, and, and business, who have exactly. worked for big companies and startups, etc. Uh, and then you have exhibited leadership, etc. So, and finally, uh, you also uh, represent a minority because I don't see that there are many Egypt Egyptians. Huh? Yeah. I got the diversity scholarship as well. Your diversity scholarship? How much is it? 10,000? Yeah. How much is it? 20. You got 20,000, so which is, uh, which is good, okay? So yeah. by the way, instead gives a lot of scholarship. Huh? For instance, yes. all the students that we got for DMIM, they all got ten thousand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And if you come from, I don't know, uh, the Middle East, uh, uh, so uh, Karim was in contact with one of our students called uh, Amze, who is from Jordan, and uh, he received like twelve thousand. And of course, for DMA, they give you more because simply is he has a good salary, so he's going to lose a lot. So anyway, no matter what, it's still going to be costly for him. Huh? Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, you agree, Karim, that uh, no matter what, uh, it's going to cost you uh, easily 80,000 euros. Huh? Okay? Yeah, but the uh, euro is, is pretty weak now, which is, a, which is a good news for the, for the business school. Um, yes. So basically, yes, they took you because, of their, because you, you fit in, uh, in terms of international exposure, uh, intellectual abilities, uh, quality of the work experience, leadership, and also you bring something. And by the way, they gave him a, a scholarship for diversity. So unfortunately, if you're Indian, there will be probably nothing because there are lots of Indians standing at INSEAD. So uh, you, you're not really, uh, you, you, you don't really represent diversity. Uh, but imagine that if you come from, I don't know, from Peru, uh, from, uh, from Egypt, uh, I don't know, from Kazakhstan, uh, these countries are underrepresented. So they will give you uh, some type of, of that. Huh? Okay? Yeah. Alors, yeah. Basically, uh, Karim, I remember that you have applied to INSEAD only, which is rare. Huh? Now don't do that and don't apply to one. No, I, I, I applied to two schools actually. ISP. I applied to uh, AS and uh, and and INSEAD. I, I got accepted in both. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, I'm I'm sorry to say that, but the the reason why I had like I chose what and one of the main factor I had to make the decision was the the monetary factor. Uh, just due to the fact that I was in touch with ESA for a long time, I've been there, I've visited the campus, I know students and all that, but definitely, without a doubt, INSEAD is, is, is by far the brand, the history, the, the success record is definitely uh, like very, very heavy and uncomparable. But, um, but yeah, uh, in the end, uh, INSEAD in, in was able to give me a better offer, was able to really value my skills and, and capabilities in a much better way, so I, I had to go with it, but... Uh, uh, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and why these two, uh, Karim? Why, why have you applied to these two programs only? Why not LBS? Why not American programs? Uh, why? Um, that's really a, a very good question, and uh, for me, I, 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 I the, again, NCED was the diversity, so it was for me, uh, it has to exist. And with ESA, uh, I had the relationship. Uh, I just my, my strategy was as follows I like to connect and I like to believe in what I do, it's not just apply for the sake of applying. So, when it comes to NCED and when it came to uh, to ESA. These two universities, I've I've built rapport, I've built uh, connection, 
I've done a lot of research. I've met uh, alumni. I have, I've, I have friends. I have like I've visited the campuses. I've visited the people. Like it was so, like um, an idea. You know, it's something that I've worked on for a long time. Like maybe I the MBA idea came to me in 2018 or 2019. I executed on it in 2020 and then I deferred because of the COVID and then now I finally executed and I'm, and I'm continuing in it. So uh, when it comes to application, my advice would be don't just apply for the sake of applying. It will be w much worth your while if you really build a good connection with the university, you know, and, and connect with the people and do a lot of things and see if it suits your personality, suits your character, suits your career ambition and goals uh and and then apply even if, regardless of the brand and regardless of the ranking and regardless of all these things just the the when it comes from inside the the the, the probability of success in my opinion will be much higher than if it just came for the sake of applying in Seattle because it's number one harvard because it's number two like this you know it's i think um connection um would be worth your while in a, in a much better way okay so so basically so yes, uh, listen to, to what uh, Karim said. Uh, don't apply for the sake of applying. Now you need to apply to uh, uh, to quite a lot of schools, huh? okay? Especially, uh, I've seen many Indians huh, here. So you, when you're Indian, you have to see that 25% of the applicants are Indian, and you need to take, uh, normally the, the acceptance rate is, uh, already when you're European, it's difficult, because uh, top schools have an acceptance rate from uh, seven to 20 percent okay so imagine that uh when you're in jan you multiply uh, the factor by uh, three or four three to five which is of course which explains why you have so many good applicants get rejected for, for instance to give you an id so karim got accepted to iac okay and uh, to give you an id this year he had three students from india who have applied to iac okay and they all had 730 gmat okay so one got accepted, one got accepted, but after having been waitlisted for two months, okay? And another one got rejected after the interview. And because I asked IEC to interview him, because if I had not asked, probably they would have had no interview. So it means that when you're 730, when you have a 730, and you apply for an MBA, for a master's, it's fine, okay? But for an MBA, uh, it does not guarantee acceptance, huh? okay? So basically, you see, Karim, uh, depending on where you come from, it's important to, to apply to many schools. But of course, Karim having a good, uh, a, a unique profile, it was probably easier for him. So basically, yes, what yes. I understand, Karim, you got accepted to IEC in 2020. And because of the COVID, of course, I understand that spending so much money to study from home via Zoom, uh, it's not exactly what you want. Huh? Okay. Yeah. We have decided to defer and apply later on to start uh, in 2020. Uh, yes. And of course, you have the say to take IAC in Seattle. So of course, some people may prefer IAC because it's a two-year program. Others may prefer Inside because it is shorter. Of course, the Inside brand is more recognized than the IAC brand outside. Okay. Now, a lot of students that I have in uh, in Spain, they want to go to IAC full stop because uh, they want to stay in Spain and they uh, they want they know that the network is uh, is huge. Okay. So, uh, Karim. Uh, what is it to apply for an MBA? What is it? It's a, it's a, it's a lot of work, huh? No? Remember, yeah. you used to wake up at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock uh, to prepare for your... Um, your classes and, and also the connection. And then it, it requires, I think, um, um, it requires a lot, of, uh, a huge level of, of maturity. Yeah. Right? Because it's a, it's a big endeavor, big investment. It's a transformational... Uh, 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 approach or a transformational endeavor so you, you have to be responsible and have a very high sense of integrity when it, when it comes to when it comes to your choices and when it comes to the, the, the moment of, of execution you know and uh, you would be me meeting with very highly intellectual people people who are very successful people who who value their time and, and value their professions so if if you're not up to the standard then definitely it would be a, a, a big loss and, and like kind of a shock to you because in order for you to stand up again from a, from a shock like this it would be very difficult so uh, just before you apply and before you decide just make sure that you are up for the challenge and up for the the, the hard work yeah. yes exactly huh? 
So basically, what is uh, what is very important to know is that probably the most uh, the, and I'm sure that others will, will again would say the same. The most difficult thing in the process is the GMAT, and yes, as you absolutely. know, the yeah. GMAT is not. Yeah, you agree. And you, you see, the GMAT it will, it will vary from countries per country. Okay, I'll give you an example. Last year, I had a student from Africa who got in with a 600. Okay, so I thought I never thought that he would make it, but he got in with a 600. Okay, for the M MDA. Uh, and then I had student who did not even get an interview from India with a 730. So basically, you have to, to wonder yourself, what is the average score? And uh, what do I stand in the rest? Uh, am I overrepresented? So in that case, you need more than the average score. Am I underrepresented? So in that case, maybe I had girls, for instance, from I had a girl, Laura from Shenzhen, I believe, from Italy, who got in with a 640. Huh? OK? So basically, if you're an Italian woman, uh, they take you with a 640. Huh? OK? Uh, so basically, at MD Center, we know pretty well. But by the way, we don't know precisely what is the cutoff score for, uh, for an Indian. But I would say, INSEAD probably 750. So that's why uh, we spoke to someone and we told us, Simian, I believe, we told us that she has 720. So Simian, uh, it's uh, very unlikely, but the GMAT will not be uh, a strength in your application. Huh? That INSEAD 720 is probably below the average uh, GMAT of the accepted students at INSEAD uh, among Indian, the Indian pool, huh? okay? Uh, so basically, the GMAT was difficult, and remember what we did. So uh, you were working very hard. We did, uh, we corrected the uh, test. Uh, we did difficult yeah. questions, and uh, so of course, a lot of the work was done by yourself. And then I guided you during uh, during the process. Uh, I think working with, with with you, I think it opened my my eyes, like mm -hmm. yeah, like made me become very conscious. Because it's a tricky exam, and also we are bound by uh, the, by time as well, especially if you want to do the MBA in a specific time, so you need to finish it. And normally people like come come uh, wake up to the the fact of the GMAT in a ve uh, very late, so we have to finish it in three months, four months maximum. So uh, working with you really helped me a lot into identifying my own gaps and and really being able to defeat this test yeah. because it is defeatable but uh, you need someone like you with experience to really help us tackle all the the, the blockers and, and and be able to win and, and achieve the score we want to achieve yeah, yeah exactly huh? so it's very important to and especially because you took private courses so uh, to, to to assess the level of the student and to see what you really did by the way yes. uh, I thought that you could get even a higher score but you you got what you got was enough to get in Yes. So now yes. we have uh, we have questions for for other uh, for other people uh, from from students. So for instance, Philip. So Philip, you see, Karim is from Poland. So so Polish are underrepresented, uh, and yes. he wants to uh, his dream school is in Seattle as well. So Philip, you have a question for Karim? Philip. Yes. Yes, I have two questions. So the first one is directly to Karim, and the second one is more about in Seattle itself. So okay. first question would be, um, is, was there something during your preparation for GMAT that you focused on specifically because it was more a problem for you? And how did you deal with that? And the second question I will ask later. All right. It's a very good question, by the way, the, Philippe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking it because this is the crux. This is the crux of the matter. The GMAT is a very, very unconventional test you will not study it uh, as you studied in any of the things you've you've come across in your life uh, meaning is that the right thing to do is that you have to identify your gaps and after identifying your gaps you will focus on them and then go take another text test the test will highlight the more gaps or different gaps or same gaps and then you will focus on them and then another test so the first thing you have to do is just take a mock test this is the first thing and based on the result of the mock test you will see your weak spots per topic per per section so be it quant or so be it verbal and all these topics you go and you focus on them directly this is the shortest cut the shortest path to success if you study, if you adopt any of the study approaches we do in, in, in our high school or in our university and all this, 
this this is the actual trap and this is what this is what was my problem at the beginning is that i was tackling the test and trying to study it in the conventional way but it 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 it, it was disastrous for me and when i came to uh, when i got introduced to hubert this is what the first thing he told me karim we have to do a test we have to identify what are your gaps i identified my gaps we focus on them let's focus on them and like a brute force approach boom 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 until you you strengthen your yourself and then you go take another test every week you have to take a test every week you have to take a test at least see maybe uh, uh, 12 tests minimum 12 tests before you uh, you, you sit for an actual uh, exam this is yeah, my, we, my, my we, advice. We did, we did more than that. Huh? Ah, we, we did, did more. We did more, yeah. But I mean, mm -hmm. minimum 12. Minimum 12 yeah, 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 yeah. every week. Every week. If you can even do twice a week, it would be even better. But it depends on your progress and it depends on yeah. the topics that you're, uh, you're, 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 you're working on and, and all that. So you see now, Karim, in at MD Center, we give uh, Expert Global, the one that I gave you. It's given in the, in the, in the curriculum automatically. So when they start their GMAT class, they have to take it the, even the first day they have to do a test so every week yes. every saturday afternoon they have to do a test and plus now we're going to partner either with magush or target test prep which are two good companies so that they have in addition to uh to the class to the videos to etc also some type of support uh to uh to practice so there's always something was on the app they, there's always the gmat is always with them uh, that's the idea and we understand the limit of uh, the class that we give. There's also a need for uh, a, a platform. Uh, what is your experience, uh, Ariane, of taking the GMAT? Because you, Ariane, you took the GMAT and the GRE. By the way, absolutely. Uh, the yeah. that I want to tell you is that if you have a prime on the GMAT, that's something we didn't do with Karim. Huh? But we could have switched yeah. to the GRE, OK? Uh, yeah. And you would have helped us. That's what you did, you, for instance, Ka Ka uh, Ariane. Absolutely. Even though you got a very good GMAT score, but the GRE was yeah. even better. Huh? So what, what, yeah, what? yeah, you know, see, um, my experience of the GMAT is not very different from Kareem's because, uh, you know, like he mentioned, uh, you know, it is imperative and it is of utmost importance that you know your level before you actually mm -hmm. begin prep preparing. So, you know, uh, a mock certainly helps before you before you sort of kick off uh, uh, preparations. And, you know, going forward, you know, when it comes to the GMAT, I feel it's not about the traditional me methods, because if you look at it, you know, it's a it's completely a computer adaptive test, one in which you cannot go back to the questions, you know, like in the GRE, you are allowed to go back to the questions and sort of do them again. So the GMAT, you know, more than knowledge, you know, it is about strategizing, uh, strategizing. And secondly, it is about, you know, uh, mental toughness, you know, you need to really concentrate because if you lose your focus during those three, three and a half hours, you know, you're gone. So uh, focus and, uh, you know, uh, focus and regular practice is what I would say is, you know, key to success when it comes to the GMAT. And one should back his strengths because, you know, I always knew that uh, I am stronger when it, when it comes to, you know, uh, I'm strong when it comes to the quant side of things as compared to the verbal side of things. So I was backing my strengths. And I went all out for quant and verbal verbal also I tried to improve a lot. But yes, uh, it, it's about backing your strength, I would say, and strategizing well for formulating good strategies. Because, you know, uh, this test, this test, you know, uh, if you look at the verbal section uh, or rather the quant section, there are about 31 questions, not about there are exactly 31 questions and you get exactly 62 minutes. So the ratio is pretty simple. You know, it's two is to one. So one has to practice with a timer, uh, you know, right from the word go, because, uh, you know, sometimes it so happens that a student is studying, 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 studying. And on the main day he gets, he or she sort of gets nervous and misses out on a question or a two. And, you know, usually, usually they would end up with a 720 in the mocks and main day they end up with 680. So, you know, it's all about strategizing and time management. That's all I would say. Yeah. You agree? Huh? Basically, that's, uh, that's a matter. And also, don't hesitate to switch from one test to the other. If you're pretty close to the score, imagine that you, imagine uh, Kevin, you would have, uh, imagine that uh, Karim, you would have scored 620, then maybe, and after six months, he gets 620 only, then we have said maybe we can switch to the GRE. Because basically, Absolutely. the comparison table between the GMAT and the GRE is uh, more advantageous to 
the GRE, also they have found a very good, uh, how can I say, very good lobbying, <laughs> probably, because the, uh, the comparison table is, is wrong. Okay, so... Uh, uh, also, uh, also, I would like to say that, you know, since I've answered both these tests, I can certainly mm -hmm. say that GRE's quant is much easy and, you know, yeah. lesser, uh, less complex, you know, if you compare the quantitative sections of both the GMAT and the GRE. Verbal, obviously, when it comes to the GRE, it's a different ballgame altogether. But yeah. yes, uh, team, quant team, quantitative, team, yeah. yeah, if you're somebody team, who, yeah. who, who's, yeah, if you're somebody who's, who, who doesn't like, uh, doesn't like uh, mathematics or is not good with numbers, you should go with the, you should go with the GRE and, you know, vice versa if you like maths. So, yeah. And and also to to add to um, what Erin said is that um, uh, so one second I have someone with. Hello. So basically, so I meant to me that that sorry, for instance, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, my mom, you know, <laughs> models yeah. they don't know any any <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> So uh, to capitalize on what Arian said is that uh, uh, if you are a, a native English speaking uh, uh, English speaker, then I would also recommend that uh, the, the GMAT would be an advantage as well because if you you would be definitely good with the grammar and stuff like that. But if you're non-native, the GRE would be uh, I think maybe uh, more, more a privilege or leverage. You can leverage it better because it's only about words and vocab and, and stuff like that. So you would have you 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 wouldn't have to be uh, like an expert in the grammar or all these things to to pass the GRE. You know, so it's only words and how you understand the the, the, the origins of, of words and the, the Latin and the, the like. The, the 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 strategy is different, but I think uh, um, the the you need to know, like, if you like grammar, then go for the GMAT. If you don't like grammar, when it comes to um, the the, um, the verbal section, if you don't like, then go for the GRE as well. Okay, and of course, if you like a cal if you need a calculator, some people don't like, and on the GRE there's a calculator. Even though I don't think it's very useful, but uh, some people are uh, feel feel better. Okay, so we said that for people who are weaker at mathematics, I suggest that they go for the the GRE. Alors then uh, maybe. Uh, so there is also Samrat. So Samrat, I guess that you want to apply for INSEAD, uh, to INSEAD, I guess. So Samrat, what, what is your question, Samrat? I'm sorry, I had the second question. Oh, yeah, sorry, Philip. Yeah. Right, yes. right, yeah. um, so this is more like about the INSEAD in general. Uh, so I recently found that INSEAD is looking at the uh, previous schools of, of the applicants. And if, the, uh, if their schools are not let's say, um, English-speaking schools, then they require an IA, uh, basically another test that proves that your English is of certain level. Is, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, is there some, I don't know, list of schools or do they, do they um, provide what type of diploma you, you know? You what do you mean by this, Philippe? Well, yeah, no, what do you mean by this, Philippe? You need to have a bachelor. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it can be a three-year or four-year bachelor. But three-year bachelor, for instance, I didn't say that I know. For information, uh, in Canada, they want four-year bachelors in general. Okay? Some mm -hmm. schools want four-year bachelors. But you, you have a bachelor or you have a master? You have a master? No? I have a master, yes. Yeah, yeah, it, it's enough. Huh? But the bachelor is enough. Yourself, you have, you have a master as well. You have a bachelor and a master, Karim. Haven't you? Yeah? Yes, yes, Karin? I have a yeah, bachelor yeah. and a master. Yeah, yeah both. Okay. So that's uh, the question. So, uh, Samrat, you have a question for us? Samrat? Hello? Uh, Samrat? No, sir. Yeah. I, Samrat I, is our I, student, he's from India, so, and he wants to apply to himself. So, wh what question have you got for? Uh, which question have you got for Karim? Uh, Hello? I don't have. Yeah, sir, I don't have any such question for now. So, I'm just uh, listening. Okay. Well, maybe uh, there, there's something that students want to know, Karim. Something that I believe we prepared. It's the the Kira interview, okay? Because uh, at INSEAD, like in any other school, you have an application and you have a, 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 a motivation interview. But there's also a Kira interview. So what, what is the Kira interview, Karim? What is it exactly? So I think it's a, it's a, it's another screening test after after you after the um, you you finish your application. 
They just want to get to see you. They want to assess your communication skills, your presentation skills, your actual like um, uh, morphology, like do you fit or you do not fit? And the questions are very basic. You know, like they would ask you uh, to introduce yourself. They would ask you to tell me about a situation where you left an impact. And all you have to do is just give them a very brief answer. And it's a 30 minute, uh, the timer would be 30 seconds or one, one uh, or 60 seconds where you'd have to give the answers. And I think we, I did a uh, very uh, uh, like uh, fruitful exercise with, with Hubert before that, like he gave me like maybe, 30 or 40 questions that I had to prepare and you you will get one and it's only you will get one or two maximum and that's it but for, for me it wasn't a challenge um, the the key thing for me that made me overcome it is practice I open the camera and I ask the question and I, I look at myself in the camera and, and I narrate the, the, the answer to, to the question and I, I felt comfortable with it and then when at the time or at the moment of the the Kira test it was very simple just they asked me the question i answer they asked me the question i answer very seamlessly like without any any stress or any pressure uh, and also to make to make things good at the beginning in 2020 i was in a completely different space when it comes to skills and capabilities and i was really i dreaded the the the, the, the interview and and I, I don't think that I did well even in front of the camera. And yet I was invited to the interview. So I don't think yeah, I don't want students to to, to stress on it. Uh, just take it as part of the part of the process and, and and do the due diligence required. And I'm pretty sure that you you will ace it because there's nothing there's nothing um, complicated about it. It's just an answer and a question, uh, like a question and answer, and that's it. And, and maximum there will be two or three questions. So nothing to fear yeah so it's uh it's something uh, to do uh basically where, where is there uh, uh there are some people have left already because there was uh there was uh, someone who is new uh and we can actually uh, the others uh, the others have left okay um so, uh, so basically, what what are the, the last pieces of advice I would like to give to 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 applicant uh, Karim? Mm, when it comes to application, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To, start to, early. To get to start as early as possible. Yeah. I mean, start early as possible. Have a strategy and and, and go for it. And yeah. this is the the main thing, the the main yeah. advice. Yeah. And like, you, Ariane, yeah. what would you say, Ariane? Because you got accepted to to many schools as well, Ariane. But it was M I M U. M I M M I M. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's 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 pretty much the same. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, know your strengths and back your strengths. And this is this is not going to be a process that's going to be done overnight. It's going to take time. It's tedious. So you know, you need to you know you need to keep at it. You need to you need to hustle because you know you won't get you know you're talking about schools like H T C and N C R and NCR. It's not something that, you know, uh, the offer letters of the school isn't something that you wake up to every day. So just, I, I just have one piece of advice, focus and just be persistent. That's it. And start as early as possible, like uh, Kareem mentioned, you know. So and, yes. and just be honest, you know, uh, when, when, you, when it comes to... When sometimes it so happens that, you know, students write, uh, you know, things on their application. Hello? that they haven't actually pay or the other you know you might get caught so just okay. just so, be so honest just, so... just be very very honest okay so basically to sum up uh, karim said to you uh, apply to the school that you want to really uh, get in by the way that's something that i always do to with my students i always say uh, okay we have a backup school the duke uh, if you get Duke, will you go? And if they say no, it's just a backup school, they say no. So always, you have to apply to the school that you're sure that you're going to go, no matter what, okay? Uh, so sometimes there are three schools, sometimes there are 10 schools. Me, yeah, I don't know, I think I apply to, to three schools. Uh, but of course, I'm a European, it's easier. Uh, maybe if you're Indian, apply to more schools. Karim has applied to to, uh, to two schools, uh, Ariane to many more schools. So that's, that's something that you have to do. Some people are just, just want the best possible school, so they don't really care. They apply and they see what they get. And then, of course, 
uh, a lot of the things have to do with organization. Huh? The better organized, the more organized, the better. So start early. So now, for instance, with Ariane, we have students who are now second year uh, bachelor students, okay? And will start uh, their uh, masters in two years. Again, we start to work on them. We start to improve their profile, about the GMAT, etc. So it's a long process. Uh, Karim uh, will have started to apply, uh, to, to prepare the process in 2019, and he will start his MBA in 2023, okay? Be between that, you had the COVID, of course, but anyway, it took him time because you have to be ready. Uh, uh, you need to have the, the funds, uh, etc. So there are many, many things to take into consideration. And of course, don't forget that the most, unfortunately, unfortunately, the most important criteria in MD admissions is the GMAT. Huh? Okay. So we say it's not the most important, but you say if you don't have a certain GMAT, they will not listen to you. Okay. And then after that, the rest. Okay. But the GMAT is the entry point. Okay. And then okay. So of course, if you talk to inside, they will say no, it's not, it's not true. Uh, and never had an Indian who get uh, inside with less than 700, okay? Europeans, I told you, 640, I had, and uh, even some people from Africa, even with the 600, okay? So basically, because uh, they have to, uh, basically, they have to revise their strategy depending on the, the origin of the candidates, huh? okay? So, Karim, it was very nice to talk to you. I hope that I will see you, because I go to INSEAD once a year. Where will you go? You go to, to Fontainebleau, Singapore, Bose, uh, Warcraft? Uh, Fontainebleau, Fontainebleau, Fontainebleau. At the beginning, I will start in Fonti and then I will see if I'm uh, I'm going to do a semester or two in Singapore later on. Okay. Me, what I were you, if I were you, uh, I, I would go for, of course, Singapore is a nice place to be, but if you have some money to spend, go, go to Stanford, go to Wharton. At least it will be a change uh, for you. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, the MIM doesn't have that, you see, uh, Ariane, but the MBA, you can have like two months. Uh, in uh, at Wharton, so of course you cannot say that you have the MBA from Wharton that you have an exchange program, and then you can also use their uh, their um, their the brand there. There. yeah their brand. Of course, sometimes when I see on LinkedIn, I see MBA instead MBA Wharton. You cannot really say that you have an MBA from Wharton because you spend two months at Wharton. Well, but you can use their care services. No? Okay, uh, sometimes it's a bit confusing. Voilà. So I wish you uh, thank you very much, Karim. I know it was not Thanks. easy. Okay, so. Yesterday, Xenia told me, yes, uh, he may not be there, but no. I said that if he, is arri if he arrives at 9 o'clock, uh, he can be with us at 2. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, so I knew that uh, you, you will make it, but yeah. it's, always, it's always difficult uh, to be on time. And by the way, so Alexandra, she got a job at uh, LVMH, I believe, okay? Uh, at Vuitton, which is something that she, she loves, and she works in the strategy for LVMH. And she was a, she's fond of Dior, of Christian Dior. So basically, it was a way for her to combine her interest for uh, fashion and for strategy. Huh? Ariane. Okay. So Thank Ariane you, guys. Is, Ariane is more into IB and entrepreneurship. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you very bye -bye. much, Ken. It was nice yeah, to meet you. Bye -bye. Same here. Bye-bye.